to them, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after another, surely you don't mean me, Lord. I am Peter. My brother Andrew and I were fishing by the Sea of Galilee one afternoon, and Jesus came by, and he said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. He immediately left everything and, and proceeded down with him. One morning he said, Simon, put out to the sea and let your nets out to get a catch. I said to Jesus, Lord, we've been out all night. We've caught nothing. But at your word, we will cast out the nets. We caught so much fish, we had to go call one of the neighboring boats to come over and help us to process it. It was there just wasn't enough uh, room in our boat. When we reached the shore, I fell at Jesus' feet, and I cried out, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinner. But Jesus said that from now on, we'd be fishing for men. In fact, he even changed my name. From Simon to Peter, which means the rock. Then by Caesarea Philippi, I confessed him as the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responded, On you I will build my church. You are the rock. A moment later when I protested because he spoke about going to Jerusalem to suffer death at the hands of evil men, he rebuked me and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. He was talking to me. I'm a mixture of good and evil. Godliness and devilish. I really want to prove to him that my loyalty and my sincerity and devotion are genuine. But tonight he said that one of us would betray him. I promised to follow him even into death. And he said to me that before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Jesus prayed for me to keep Satan out. And even though the others call me the big fisherman, around him I feel small and unworthy. Well, what would I do tonight before the rooster announces morning? Will I really deny him? Will he disown me? Will he close the doors of the kingdom for me forever? Was he referring to me when he said, someone will betray him? I knew in my heart that if I knew who that person was, I would stab him with my knife. But should I be pointing that knife at me? God grant that it may not be me. Lord, is it I? My name is James, but since many men bear that familiar name, I am called James the Lesser. Being lesser in size and in some, than some men of the same name. Since my father's name was Alpacius, I am sometimes known as James, son of Alpacius. Our family is a proud one, tracing its ancestry back to the tribe of Gad, one of the twelve sons of Jacob. I will never forget the day I first saw the Master. I was passing down a road near the place where John was baptizing. I was curious to see what was going on, so I turned aside for a closer look. Then I saw Jesus asking John to baptize him. John refused, but Jesus insisted. After John had baptized the Lord, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. 
in the form of a dove. And we hear a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> Later, when Jesus called me to be one of his disciples, I followed him. At the end of the first year of his public ministry, he chose me as one of the twelve apostles. And since that moment, I have walked with him. I have talked with him, I have stayed with him, and I have prayed with him, trying to learn as much about him and his heavenly Father as I could. It is easy for me to speak of our Lord. I am in awe of God's grace revealed to us in Jesus. He is our only hope. I will never tire of sharing the, God, the good news of Jesus. And now one of us is to betray him? Surely it is madness to think that this could be. Surely the betrayer is out of his mind. But I keep asking myself, is it I? Is it I? I am Matthew, like Zacchaeus, I am a tax collector. Some call me Levi, and others call me Matthew, the public. But my character changed through my fellowship with Jesus, and he changed my name as well. He called me one day when I was in my office collecting taxes. Follow me, he said, and I rose and followed him. Later, I gave him a great feast in my home, and many of his disciples and my business friends were present. It was a royal occasion for me to entertain Jesus and his disciples. When some of the Pharisees complained about Jesus eating with publicans and sinners, Jesus said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And he reminded them of the words of Hosea, we say, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Adding those significant words of his own, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Since that day, when I repented, I followed him. I have studied our scriptures closely, and I am now convinced that Jesus is the fulfillment of every prophecy about the coming Messiah, God's anointed one. I have listened carefully to his service. Someday, I hope to write a paper to prove he is the Messiah spoken of in our sacred writings, and to record the heart of his message, the good news about the kingdom of God. I remember the first sermon he delivered on the mountain in Galilee three years ago. I, it was a new message, good news for all the world. I understand. Yet, he has just spoken bad news, tragic news. One of us will betray him. Who can it be? Will they suspect me because I was once a hated tax collector? Do I suspect myself? Who is I? Is it I? I am Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. I am the man who first brought his own brother to the Lord. I'm not a gifted man, just an ordinary average man like any one of you. But I tried to do what I could to serve the master with the gifts and talents that I have. The others call me Andrew the bringer because it seems that all I've ever done is bring someone else to Jesus. When I first brought my brother Peter to Jesus, I saw a gradual transformation in his life, and I give glory to God. I found a little lad with five loaves and two small fish the day when Jesus fed the 5,000. <clears throat> and as I watched him feed many, so little, 
and saw everyone else eat until I was full. I was so happy I had part in this. Just recently, some Greeks came seeking the master, and I was called once more to bring the Greeks to Jesus. He must have seen something in value in me, and others that overlooked, because he selected me to be one of the twelve apostles. I've been very close to the master ever since. We have shared many a triumph and many a tragedy. I know in my heart he truly is the Lamb of God. I've not been in his inner circle like Peter, but I've been a friend and companion to my Lord. What greater gift could life afford a fisherman? And now, one of us to betray him? <coughs> it is unthinkable. <coughs> Who could he How could he get away within his own heart? Could it be Andrew the Bringer? Is it I? Is it I? I am James, the brother of the Apostle John. Jesus called us both while we were mending our nets by the Sea of Galilee with our father Zebedee. They say I have a fiery temper. Even Jesus called me son of thunder and rebuked me. One day Jesus and all of us disciples were visiting Samaria. A group of townspeople met us and ordered us out of town. I couldn't believe it. I begged Jesus to call down fire from heaven and consume them. But that was contrary to Jesus' way. Jesus chose to love. I was with him in the home of Jairus when Jesus raised his little daughter from the sleep of death. On the Mount of Transfiguration, my brother and I, and Peter too, saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. Our mother Salome was ambitious on our behalf and urged us to request, Teacher, grant us to sit, one at your right and the other at your left, when you come into your kingdom. Jesus told us he didn't know what we were asking. Are you able to drink from the cup that I am to drink? Will you be able to be immersed in the suffering I will experience? We said, Lord, we are able. Then he told us that he would surely drink his cup, but they did not make the decisions of who would sit at his right or who would sit at his left in his kingdom. The others were angry when they heard of our request. Jesus reminded us that he who would be first must be servant of all, and he demonstrated his words by washing our feet before this very supper. And now the one who taught us the way of love is to be betrayed by one of those whom he loves? Who can it be? Why should one of us do such a thing? I keep thinking deep down in my own heart. Is it I? Is it I? I am Simon, the zealot. Or Simon Zella. Before Jesus called me, I belonged to a group of hot headed, bloodthirsty revolutionaries known as the Zealots. We were all for armed rebellion against Rome. We believed in crushing our enemies under our heels and establishing the ancient glory that was Israel's in the days of King David and King Solomon. But Jesus told us of another kind of kingdom. The kingdom within the human heart, where God reigns forever. Since I have heard him, I have changed my mind and my allegiance. He has shown me the conquest of the heart is the only true and lasting conquest. So I have given him my highest loyalty and my deepest devotion. Using a military term, I have surrendered myself to him, to love as he loves to obey as he obeys, to serve as he serves. This surrender has not imprisoned me. Rather, it has set me free for the first time in my life. I am not afraid of Rome, for God is almighty. We will conquer our enemies by outliving and outloving them. In the name of the one God has revealed to us, Jesus, 
whom we call our Savior and Lord. And now the Master says, there is one among us who would attempt to use force against what can only be conquered by love. Who can it be? Matthew the publican? The big fisherman or his brother? Or does he suspect me, since I am the only former zealot among us? Is it I? Is it I? All the others came from Galilee. My home is in the village of Kerioth in Judea. Hence, I am known as Judas of Kerioth, or Judas is scattered. The only Judean in the group. I followed Jesus eagerly, believing him to be the long-awaited savior of the Jews. Well, I am a practical man. The others must have had confidence in me because they elected me as their treasurer. Despite what the others say behind my back about my impatience and my stinginess and my ambition, Jesus believed in me. If he had not, surely he would have chosen someone else in my place. Some say I gather this money for my own use and that Jesus' words about the love of money were directed at me. Yes, I complained when Mary washed her feet with that expensive ointment and perfume. I still think it's a waste of money. The 30 pieces of silver that I invested with the chief priest, that was my own money. That was my own personal money. I have my reasons. I believe Jesus, but someone has to force the issue and make him assert himself as God's Messiah. He refuses to make a move. He hints that he knows what I have done. He said so when he washed my feet, and now when we dipped out our bread in the same dish. I do have my reasons. My soul is not so black. Is your soul so pure white? I know what people need. Why does Jesus wait to make his move? He must do something dramatic, something powerful to usher in his kingdom. Should I ignore his remark? Or like the others, should I piously and self-righteously ask myself, is it I? Is it I? My name is Nathaniel. And although I am sometimes called the Father, I know I am a prideful man with a fear of temper. Yet I too was called by Jesus, like many of the others. I am a fisherman. My home is in Cana of Galilee, where Jesus performed his first public miracle and turned water into wine at the way of Jesus. I was a disciple of John, the baptizer. And it was John who introduced me to Jesus at Bethany, beyond the Jordan. My friend Philip came to me and said, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. I will never forget the question I put to Philip that day. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I said, it not in scorn, or because Nazareth was held in ill repute. But the town was such a little insignificant place, and those who were familiar with her lanes and alleys wondered why God would place his anointment there. Philip simply replied, Come and see. Then I saw up Jesus, and he said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no God. In my surprise, I replied, how do you know? Jesus answered before Philip, <clears throat> before Philip called you. When you were under the fig trees, I saw you in my country. When working mothers go into the fields 
they placed their babies under the shade of the nearest fig tree. It's the lodge leaves shelter them from the hot rays of sun. So the master was actually telling me that he knew me since the day I was born. Then it was to confess my faith, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Since that time, I have served him as a disciple and a chosen apostle. Together with the others, I have walked through the, the villages of Galilee, the town of Nicopolis, in the streets of the holy city, Jerusalem. And now he speaks of a new covenant as we celebrate the Passover. And he says that one of us will betray him. How can this be? How can a traitor be numbered amongst his closest friends? Yet I ask myself, is it I? Am I the one? Is it I? I am Thomas the twin, or Thomas called Didymus, which means twin. While I do not look upon life with dread and gloom, I usually demand proof before I believe. I want to see before I make a commitment. Yet, am I not a man of doubt? Rather, I feel that I am a man of daring. I recall the day when Mary and Martha sent word to the Lord that their brother Lazarus was dead. Jesus turned to us and said, let us go to him. We knew of the growing opposition to Jesus and some of the disciples didn't want to go to Bethany. They shrank from the unseasoned danger. Yet I remember how I spoke out and rebuked them all by saying, let us go with him that we may die with him. Why do people remember my doubts and forget my daring? Why do they remember my questions and overlook my affirmations? They remember my fear and forge my faith. I used to go fishing with some of the others, and how well I remember when Jesus shared the Beatitudes uh, during his first year of ministry. We were on the horns of Haiti, just five miles west of the Sea of Galilee. I can almost see him rebuking the winds on that stormy sea and see him healing the sick, opening the eyes of the blind, unstopping the ears of the deaf, and cleaning the lepers, always bringing the good news to the poor. Yet in all this goodness, Jesus has made many enemies. They are determined to destroy him. To destroy him. Why? He would bring us all up to God while his enemies would cut God down to their size. He would make us all God's servants while they would make God their servant. And now he says that even among us, the chosen twelve, there is a traitor. Is he speaking of me? Is it I? Is it I? After Jesus called Peter and Andrew to follow him, he came to meet John and my brother James. We were in a nearby boat with our father, Zebedee, amending the nets. He called us, and we immediately left our boat and our father, and we followed him. Since that time, I have tried to understand Jesus by loving him. Sometimes I believe he is as much of a God as will ever possess a human wife. And other times I am tempted to believe that he is a God who exists prior to creation. It will continue to exist to the end of time in the consumption of it. And he is the word of God that speaks every person, every age, and all the time to come. Yet, I love him as a person, and he has returned my love. Sometimes he calls me the beloved disciple. I have shared his trial.
trials as well as his hours of victory. I was there on Mount uh, Transfiguration and we held his glory. He nicknamed me and James, Sons of Thunder, yet we are not boisterous. Me, but quite quiet, hard workers, though at times we may be a bit impatient to those who reject Jesus. Peter and I completed the arrangements for the celebration of Passover here in the upper room tonight within his close, intimate inner circle. It was me that to he told about his talk with Nicodemus when he spoke those wonderful words, for God so loved the world gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever so believed in him should, shall not perish and have everlasting life. Someday I want to make a transcript of some of them words and illustrations and wonderful deeds so that others might read and believe and I know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in believing, they may have life in his name. Now, he is one of us to be a betrayer. It's hard to believe, but must be so, because he said it. Sure, not my brother, Peter or Andrew, but could it be the beloved John, the disciple? Is it I? Is it I? My name is Philip. I came from Bethsaida in Galilee. While several of my friends and I were in Bethany listening to John the Baptist, Jesus called us to become his disciples. And all of us turned and followed. I went after my companion, Nathaniel, and was overjoyed when Jesus accepted him as a devoted follower. During these years of close fellowship with Jesus, my faith in God has become stronger and deeper. I remember so well, before he fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, asking him and the others, where are we to buy bread that all of these may eat? Little did I know that Andrew was already bringing a young lad with his lunch to Jesus. When the Greeks came to me and asked for an interview with the master, I turned them over to Andrew, but brought them to Jesus. I have always wanted to know more about the nature and person of God. When Jesus began to tell us that God was our Heavenly Father, it was almost beyond my understanding. However, I, as I have listened to the Master, I have grown to understand his words. In fact, I can almost say that he who has seen Jesus has seen the Father, because everything one, find, one wants to find in the Father, I can find in Jesus. And nothing I would not want to find in the Father do I find in the Son. Now, having seen the Father through him, he shocks us by telling us that there is a betrayer in our midst. Does the traitor not know that in betraying Jesus, he is also betraying God? That in conspiring against Jesus, he is also conspiring against God? Can one, in our number, be so blind? Who can it be? Can it be Philip? Is it I? Is it I? I carry the Greek name Thaddeus, one of the twelve whom Jesus called to be an apostle. I am sometimes known by my second name, the surname Thaddeus. My Hebrew name is Judas, the brother of James, not Judas is carried. Jesus chose each of the twelve by name. The twelve tribes of Israel took their names from the ten books of the son of Jacob, who God renamed Israel. And the two and two of and two of the sons of Jacob's son Joseph, who were named Ephraim and Manasseh. The twelve tribes were the cornerstones of the old Jewish kingdom and were chosen to become the 
cornerstones of the new kingdom. I feel unworthy to be numbered among these apostles. I well remember the day. After a night of prayer, he called us to him and gave us authority over unclean spirits and the power to heal every kind of disease. He then commissioned us to go forth and preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He told us to be as wise as serpents, yet as innocent as doves. Since he was sending us forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, Jesus said, it is enough that the disciple to be like his teacher and his servant as his master. I was in Jerusalem when he gave the great invitation, Come unto me, and ye all that waver, and are heaven waiting, and will give you all rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And now he, who came to share men's burdens, has a burden of trust upon him, the knowledge that one of us will betray him. Which one of us can it be? Who is the traitor? Or will all of us betray him before the night's over? Philip and Peter, and Judas and John, and even Thaddeus? Is it I? Is it I? In love, Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. When it is received in faith, it assures us of God's forgiveness in Christ. We are restored, and our relationship with our Heavenly Father is made stronger, so we can walk in a newness of life. Please join in the last hymn, number 46.
be each and every one of us 